Hi everyone, Tim the Plane Man here and welcome back to Plane Time Red Baron Triplane Edition. This is a, a special sort of catch-up edition just to give an overview of the electronics uh, that are included in the plane. I noticed that uh, I've got them scattered through all the different videos so it would be nice to have just a, um, a something that brings together all the electronic components uh, used in the plane. So what, what actually happened when I originally bought the beautiful uh, Dancing Wings Hobby Kit was that uh, I bought one of the flavors of the plane. You can buy it in several different versions, including, you know, there's a version that includes every all of the electronics you need. Uh, I didn't buy that one, but you can if you want to. Dancing Wings Hobby it will give you, um, you know, a package including servos and ESC and, and everything that you need, a sort of a, uh, a bind and fly version, I mean, you have to build the kit, but uh, it'll have all the components. I bought the the plane bolster kit and the motor. And the motor is quite important. Uh, I'll put a picture up for you to have a look at um, briefly. The key with the motor, there'll be two pictures actually. One will be the listing, here's the listing. And the second one is uh, shows you the mounting because the mounting is kind of interesting. Uh, some of you probably know this, but it was uh, new to me. In this case, the motor gets the end, the motor gets mounted backwards, so that the the actual um, shaft of the propeller here is actually um, sticking out the back of the motor, and the motor is actually mounted in a little box. Special particular motor required. So you, you unless you change how the kit works, you wouldn't be able to use just a regular motor that you buy you'd need to buy the correct motor. I thought the easiest way to do this was just to buy the kit and the motor because it's so special. Everything else, I did buy the same ESC that would have come with the kit from Dancing Wings Hobby and I bought that from Dancing Wings Hobby as part of the same order but I bought it separately because the kit came with you know there was one option with the motor and then there was another option with the motor, ESC and servos and I didn't want to use the servos uh, that came with the kit because I prefer digital servos. So I just bought the motor and the kit, kit number 1702, and this is the listing. And it works great as far as I can see, and I've had no problems with it. So then I, uh, I went shopping. Um, I learned a lot about servos. You've seen maybe some of my videos, but um, you know, I did some analysis when I was working through the SOP with Camel and fundamentally come to the conclusion that um, digital servos are the go. There's no good reason not to use digital servos and lots of reasons to use them. So basically I'm just a, I'll, I'll just buy digital servos, that's it. So I went ahead and I bought 1.7 gram digital servos to fit in the wings. Um, so these are the digital servos that, that you might be able to see here in the wings. And these are tiny little but very powerful uh, digital servos that control the ailerons on this plane. From what I've seen so far, they, they're, they're working very well. Oh, I beg your pardon, they're not 1.7 gram servos, they're 2.2 gram digital servos. But like I've mentioned before, this, the servos, although we all talk about 2.2 gram, 3 gram, 9 gram servos, what really matters is the torque, the amount of power that that servo can actually push. So the 2.2 gram servos can actually generate 0.16 kilograms per centimeter of torque, which is, for those tiny little servos, that's an awful lot of torque. Uh, and it probably about, you know, based on the calculation of the wing area of that aileron, probably something like five times as much torque as you, you would ever need. I, the, the recommended servos and the ones that the Dancing Wings Hobby kit comes with for the rudder and elevator are five gram servos analog. So I put 4.3 gram servos, digital servos in, and these are the servos that I, uh, that I use for those. These are actually Dancing Wings Hobby servos. Uh, they, um, for some reason, and I'm not really sure why, uh, Dancing Wings Hobby, as you can see in the listing, they have a range of different sizes of servos that you can buy. And 
uh, although uh, most of them are analog. And if you read the specs carefully, the one servo that they do have that is a digital servo is this 4.3 gram servo. And so this is the one that I've actually got. And you'll see in there that the, uh, the torque rating is at 4.2 volts, uh, 0.35 uh, kilograms per centimeter, which is more than double that of the, uh, the little digital servos in the aileron. So again, it seems to me like they, they're fine. Now, that's the basics of the plane. Well, apart from a receiver. So you, could, you can buy, obviously, there are a range of different receivers. Uh, the receiver that I've chosen for this is a, a FlySky FSX6B receiver. The reason I use the FlySky receiver is because it doesn't have a servo rail on it. And the reason why I don't need or want the servo rail is it just uses space and, and weight. And it, it's completely unnecessary if you're going to connect the receiver to a flight controller like the SNL Plus flight controller that I put in the plane. The same thing would apply if you're just going to use a gyro. You can connect, you know, four different wires from the receiver to the gyro and then four wires from the gyro to the servo. Or you can take one wire from the receiver to the servo, to the gyro or to the flight controller. And if you're only going to take one wire, you don't need all the other connectors. So this FSX6B receiver has Actually, it, ha it has several different connectors, but one, they're basically just different flavors of single wire out. There's an I bus out, an S bus out, and I think an S port or something like that. I'm using the S bus because it's fairly generic. Most um, uh, components support it. This particular one, the, the SNL Plus supports S bus, and it's a really simple, just one wire connection. And one of my favorite things about this, no soldering. I love to avoid soldering whenever I can, and in this case, the FS6X6B I found is one of the, the cleanest and simplest receivers that uh, you can bind with an OpenTX radio and a single wire, and the, the, the receiver comes out of the box with a standard wire that connects the FSX6B receiver directly to the NS bus out on uh, something like the SNL Plus or a gyro on, or even uh, I also used it on a, uh, a Pix Racer uh, and Pixhawk flight controller. So it's it's really quite sophisticated and powerful and simple. No soldering, love it. On top of that, one of the reasons why I went with the SNL Plus flight controller as opposed to a gyro like in the Sop with Camel, which I have up here, I pretty much just went with a gyro, and it's got a, a thing called an FC-130, um, which is a gyro in it, and I'll be flying that with that uh, flight controller with a stabilizer in it, and that uh, will keep the plane level, um, hopefully make it more easy to fly, and uh, and it, but it's it's pretty straightforward and simple. The SNL Plus will drive a FPV camera and put an OSD, an on-screen display, on the picture. So potentially, and I'm just going to use that for recording right now, it means I don't have to have a camera with an SD card in it to record on the, uh, on the plane, and I can record from the ground, but I could potentially also fly the plane FPV if, uh, if we get that far, we shall see how that goes. So, uh, so what I have here is uh, a camera, which you can see here, and I'll put the link, uh, um, the, the listing up on the screen as well. This is an Isheen C800T camera, FPV camera, and this is a AKK X2 video transmitter with uh, a, lo a lollipop right-hand polarized video transmitter antenna and the GPS that you can see here comes with the flight controller so it wasn't that I had to buy that separately it was just out of the box with the flight controller not sure I don't really need the GPS I almost feel like I could take it off and uh, 
maybe don't even have to use it. Uh, it it's not really required for anything that I'll be doing. There is a return to home capability where potentially if the plane flew, flew away, uh, it could fly itself back. Honestly, I don't expect to be flying it very high or very far, so um, not sure that I really need that option, but it's there. So I thought I might as well just um, plug it in and see how it goes. So I'll quickly run through where those components are in the, in the model. Of course, now with everything assembled, it's a little tricky to see them inside. I'll try to track down some pictures that I had when I was building the plane of some of the components. Now, what we have here at the front is obviously we have the motor and the motor is mounted uh, in behind the cowling and that is that is screwed into the plane. So what we have, um, and I've just, I've already shown you those already, I guess, but under here we have the aileron servos, the video FPV receiver, oh sorry, transmitter and camera, and the GPS, they're here. If we pop open the hatch, and this is the reason why I built the hatch, you can actually see inside here, you can see that there's two servos there. They're the aileron servos, the 4.3 gram digital aileron, oh, sorry, elevator and rudder servos that control the, the rudder and, and, the, and if you look in here where my finger is and, and it's really not going to be easy to see but I'll, I'll pop up a different picture that maybe makes it clearer. This is where the SNL Plus flight controller is installed and I think you can see here right there on the side of the plane that's the FSX6B radio receiver. So that's all accessible via the hatch, which I'm very happy with how that all came together. And as you can see, I ran the wires for the aileron for the servos and the, the everything that's mounted in the upper wing is just run up the these struts here and taped on with electrical tape. So. In, in addition to that, of course, my favorite part of this plane is the switch that we have here. And inside here, and I'm sure I don't have any good pictures that show it, but there, there is a mess of wires that connect the battery to the switch, switch to the power module, power module to the ESC, and the ESC itself is mounted on the side of the plane here just on the inside and so the ESC is just at the front of the, the plane here and this is one of the most honestly annoying things about this plane if you can see that there is the hatch underneath here which is where the uh, underneath this hatch is where the battery is installed and so the battery it, so it's incredibly awkward to get to as you can see there's the landing gear and there's the hatch where you get to the battery so this this little um, thing pops off and you pop the hatch off and then you can access the battery here and connect it in and the ESC is just on the side of the fuselage in there. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're just going to fire it up and this is kind of pointless in a way. Um, it doesn't really show you very much except that it, well it does show everything is actually working. and. What I want to do is I am going to record on the screen here. I'm going to record. So I have a video signal and you can see the there's nothing coming through. There's a video signal going through to the computer and I'm recording that. So what will happen when I switch on the switch here, the flight controller will come on. And guess what? There's a picture of me coming through from the, there it is, and we have the beep, 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 and we have the beep, 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 and we have the beep, beep, beep for the uh, ESC, uh, three cell battery. We have on screen here, we have the video transmitter, the video camera from the, from the plane, taking a video picture 
and it's got an on-screen display which shows things like the number of satellites which are zero right now which is why it's blinking down the bottom left hand corner uh, it'll display the altitude which is zero the airspeed which is currently zero the the number of amps the number of volts in the battery etc uh, and it will also i mean i can rotate you can see the osd um, that the artificial horizon is working perfectly on the screen so what i should be able to do now is um, control the controls i should find ailerons so let's do ailerons right left right left right left and elevator up down got plenty of throw there now taking plus advice i adjusted that and my rudder left and right so right and left there we go and if i uncut the throttle so i'm going to make sure i'm holding the plane i'm actually going to Active. And we'll show the propeller working. She lives! As you can see, that wasn't even full throttle. Plenty of power and with some very, very careful um, adjustment of the screws on the cowling, I managed to get the, the cowling so it wasn't rubbing on the propeller and everything is working. The on-screen display is working, the video transmitter is working, the, uh, all the controls are working, and this plane is ready to fly. Stabilized flight switch mode. into stabilized flight mode, and I take it out to the field, and we shall see what happens. So, electronics. Red Baron triplane, dancing wings hobby, Tim the Plane Man, special edition, FPV version. Four minutes. And, and with my OpenTX transmitter, um, all connected and ready to fly. Thanks for watching, everyone. Please like. I really appreciate it. When if you like the video, please like. Ask, ask me questions. This is, uh, you know, I'm I'm sure there's questions that I something I haven't explained clearly. Happy to uh, help answer questions uh, about the build. And uh, if you like the video and you want to see more, please subscribe. There's more to come. Thanks everyone. Tim the Plain Man, over and out.